Hi, George here. And today we're gonna to be taking a closer look at the new photo reel. And that's under the create menu up here, right there, in the new Photoshop Elements 2024. And this is something I think is going in the right direction. I think it could be improved a little bit and I'll tell you where that can be done as we move into this. But I think it's a pretty good new feature and very useful if you do a lot of social media posting. To start off with, you need to have a whole bunch of pictures open up. I have several cat pictures right down here. And then simply go up here to create and come down to photo reel to launch this. You will then take all of those photos and put those into a basic reel. What this really is, is a simple slideshow, but you have a bit more control over this slideshow than the regular create slideshow, which you have much less control over. That does some real fancy stuff, but you can't do a whole lot with it. Okay, here we go. All of the images are now placed in this new reel. At the bottom down here, we have the timeline. You can see all of our pictures right down there. Now, the first thing you need to do at this point is to decide what layout you want. There are several layouts in here. One to one's a square layout. Bring that up, there we go. Nine to six, just standard layouts. We'll just close that. We also have layouts here for Instagram and Facebook and YouTube, YouTube Shorts right here. And TikTok, Snapchat, Twitter, and Threads. So simply choose the one you want. Now this is obviously named after Instagram Reels, so I'll go ahead and we'll choose that one. It then just applies that. Now at this point, you can take a look at your images and see if these are everything that you want. If you want to have more images, you can grab them from your computer or from the Elements Organizer right there. If you want to get rid of an image, it's easy to do. Click on this little three dots thing right here. You can then remove an image at that point. Okay, so we have all our basic images in place. We have our layout chosen. Let's now go through and adjust them. Notice up here, left-hand corner, we have a magnifier, the zoom tool, hand tool, move tool, and a horizontal type tool. Let's come in here to the move tool. With the move tool, notice the bounding box out there. That is the actual picture size. So I can move things around in here using that move tool to get just the position that I want. Notice that it maximizes the vertical dimension in here. Here's our next picture. That looks pretty good. I'm just gonna do a little adjustment on that. Little adjustment here. There we go. And this one, just a little bit of a tweak. These are all basically centered. So if your image is centered, then it works out just fine. This one wasn't centered. Need to pull it over a little bit. I think we can adjust that a bit better. Now you can't really go smaller because you go off the edge, which you can see right there. So if you don't want to go off the edge, then make sure you don't go any smaller than that. It would be nice if they had a background fill that could come in and fill that background area, but they don't have that yet. So let's go through and check every single one of the images and make sure they're all nicely aligned for the reel in here. That looks pretty good. It's kind of funny like that actually, but I think I want the whole cat showing. I'll go like that so we get a bit of that onion in there as well. That's obviously way wrong, so I'll go over here, get that cat face back in again. That looks fine. Same thing here, get the faces in. There we go. And our final one here, one of my favorite cat shots. Okay, so everything is now aligned up. If you want to at this point, you can go back here to the beginning hit the play button and see what it looks like. That timing in there, that is one half second between images. Notice it just repeats. You can control the timing right down here. It says 0.5 seconds, bottom left-hand corner. Click on that drop down. You can then go for half a second, one, two, three, or four seconds. Let's say you go for one second and I want this one second to apply to everything. Click on apply to all. And now they all become one second to get rid of this drop down just click outside here someplace so they're all now at one second person i think it's a bit too slow for this so i'll go back and apply to all click outside okay our timing is good let's take another look at this little drop down here that little three dot thing i'll go over to this one right there three dots so you can remove an image here you can duplicate it if you want to have two of the same thing rotate left rotate right flip horizontal or flip vertical you have all those options in here for your image let's just do a flip horizontal just like that, that's what that does. There we go. So I think at this point I have the basic slideshow set up. And looking at the timeline down here, we can see one of the things that I would like to see added into this, which isn't here yet, and that's transitions between the slides. It'd be nice if I could do a fade between the slides or some kind of a wipe between the slides. So transitions in here would be a real nice additional feature. Hopefully that will be coming in a future version. That's a real standard option for slideshows. So I would expect that to be happening. So we'll see if that comes in in the future. Okay, so we have our basic layout done. We have our timing done. Everything's been positioned. We can now come down and apply effects if you want to. There's an effects button bottom right-hand corner. 
Here we go. And these are just image effects. We have black and white, dark and light and contrast, a canvas look, sepia look. And there's just a couple more right down here. Cool and muted purple. Let's just give this one a sepia tone. There we go. If I go back here, notice how it's only applied to just that one image. Let's make it real contrasty. I'll go lighten. That's kind of an interesting one. You can also come down here and control the intensity of the effect. You can back it off with this slider control. And that gives you a good range of control in here over different effects on your images if you want to use that. If you want to apply the same effect to everything, let's say I wanted to do a sepia toning on everything. Here's our sepia tone. I can apply to all photos. That's that checkbox right there. Now everything will have that sepia tone effect on it. There we go. Just do no effect. And that takes it off because I have that checkbox done that takes it off of everything again. Remove that sepia tone. So not a bad little set of effects. It'd be nice to see just a few more in here, but this is a pretty good beginning set. Let's now go down to the bottom right hand corner. We have graphics and there's some graphics in here. You can place these on your image. I'll just do a little scroll down using the scroll wheel on the mouse to do this. And it's all the graphics. Obviously these white ones will work out better on a darker background. Just click. It then applies it in the middle of your image. And if you want to move this, roll over and come right onto the actual image itself. That line right there. So if I try grabbing out here someplace, it moves the background. So it can write on the actual image and grab the image and you can then move that around. You can resize it by grabbing those control handles in here, go larger or smaller. Or if you want to, again, grab on the image itself, not in these spaces around the image. You can also rotate, either come just outside one of the sides or the corners, or grab this handle right down here. Any of those will allow you to rotate your image. So you get a good amount of control on this. Choose OK. Now notice if I go to the next slide here, that's only on just that one slide. So if you want to have graphics on your slides, on all of your slides, you have to place the graphics on each individual slide to do that. Let's go over here to this one. We'll try something fun on this. I'll just grab these sunglasses, click, and there's that sunglasses again. Go inside the image itself to move it. Grab a corner is the best way to resize. Like that. And then come just outside to rotate. And there we go. So pretty easy to use, as you can see. We can zoom in and out of the view here if you want to, but I never see any reason for doing that. And I'll scroll back to the top of our different graphics over here, right hand side. There's a lot to choose from. I'd like to see a lot more, but there is a lot in here. If you want to have really good control over all of your images, over the effects on your images, over the settings in here, the contrast controls, all that stuff, your color controls, if you want to really have the best version of all of that and not be limited by what's available here inside of the reels, then what I recommend is that you take your images and you do all of your effects adjustments, all your color balancing, all your graphics, all that stuff, before you bring it into Reels. So do all that stuff just in regular advanced mode in Photoshop Elements, where you have complete control. And then once you have all your slides ready at that point, then import them in here into Reels and just use Reels for the layout here and for the timing. That's all you have to do. That's the best way to get the most power out of these things. If you want to change the position where one of your slides shows up, all you have to do is grab the slide, drag it to a different position, and it then changes the sequence down here. So you can easily drag these things around to change the order that the images come in. They just come in on the standard order that they were inside of the photo bin. But once they're here, you can drag and drop these very easily to different positions. And if you want to have some text in here, let's go to the text tool next. And you can just put in some text. Just type in here. Here's a text insert box. Just type that in. And there's some text. If you double click on that text, it brings back up the tool options down here for your text where you can change your typeface if you want to in here. You can change the color right there. You can change your type size, letting, tracking, your alignment, left, center, and right, bold, italic, and so forth. Anti-aliasing, this just means the smoothness around curves and diagonals. I'd always leave that one checked. You even can change from horizontal to vertical type in here, or bring in type warping as well, which is fun. Just bring in a style right here, just do a little warp style on that. So you have pretty much all of your text controls in here, right down there. Okay, if you're happy now with your image, you like your slides, just go back to the timeline, hit that check mark, it takes us back to the timeline right here, there we go. And then click on the export button, and this will be saved out as an MP4 video file. 
call it whatever you want. I'll just call it Cool Cats and save. That's now been done. And then just choose Done to close this out and get back into the normal advanced mode. If you want to have a nice written discussion about how to do this, I do have that inside of my HTG Photo Coach for Photoshop Elements. Let's take a real fast look at that. Here we go. I'll go over here to the PSE Coach. And then just type in Photo Reel. And there's the 2024 Photo Reel. And my article on how to use the Photo Reel is right here. So you can come in and actually use this as a text-based list on how to work with that tool. And of course, you can search for anything else in here as well if you want to. That's real easy to do. Let's just take a real fast look here at graphics. And here's the graphics panel. And this is the graphics panel that is in the advanced mode. And I think this is probably the better way to add graphics onto your Reels instead of doing it on the limited set that's available inside of Reels. Come over into the graphics panel and do it there in advanced mode. You get a better final output. Okay, so if you like this video, make sure you hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already done so. Take a look at my new HTG Photo Coach for Photoshop Elements. It's a real easy way to get all those additional answers that may not be answered in video training or in particular videos you're finding on YouTube. And I'll see you next time.